Hey guys, today we're going to be creating this scene in Thor Ragnarok where his hammer gets thrown and gets caught and she just slowly cracks it and explodes it over time. So uh, this is what it looks like. Some things we're going to go over is you can see that there's a bit of displacement on the bottom for when she crushes it. We'll do the lightning, the flash, the glow the inner glow and of course the cracks in the animation of the hammer and the strap in the back all right what I have here is I found a photo online of just the hammer the strap and the hand I keyed it out just for tutorial purpose so I have a separate layer of the hand several layer of just the hammer the strap at the back and then just just the background for the scene there. You can do whatever you like, it doesn't have to be this photo, but I'm going to be showing it on this photo. Alright, first thing you want to do is we're going to animate the hammer so it kind of looks like she's holding against it when the force of the hammer is going forward. Do so, I created a null. I'm going to rename this the wiggle. To do this, we're going to drop down, with P on the keyboard. Click Alt on the time watch and just type in wiggle bracket 10, comma 10, 10, there, just like that. And we're going to do the same for the rotation. So if you hold Shift and R, it brings up both. And then just do the same thing wiggle 10, 10, close bracket. All right. You can see that nothing's happening except the null is moving. What you can do is if you get the hand, you'll link it to the wiggle and also do the hammer and the strap, just link it. So now you get to see it shaking. Obviously this is too much and it starts right in the beginning, so I gotta fix that. The way to do that is if you go to the wiggle null, type in slider, and duplicate both of those. So I'm going to do this rotation, control, this one could be position, control. What you want to do is drop down, go to the position one first, or it doesn't matter, and highlight the second 10, grab the pick whip, and bring it to the slider, and then click the slider, let go, and then click out of frame. You're going to do the same with the rotation. So highlight the 10, grab the pick wick, bring it to the rotation slider. What this is, does is that nothing's happening right now. But if we, we can now keyframe it. But I'm going to fix the rotation of this first frame here. So go to all the other layers and change it to zero. to make it a bit easier. Let's minimize those. So now we can keyframe it. So say for frame one, we don't want any movement. But as soon as frame 16 happens, we want one in rotation and then 10 in position. So now nothing will happen and it'll slowly get into aggressiveness and move it like that. You can adjust this higher if you want. You can also change the 10 in the beginning to see what you find. I just found this works the best for this thing here. All right. Next thing you want to do is you want to duplicate the hammer clean. Solo it if you like. This stuff here is just for the keying. Don't yours doesn't have to have that obviously. We're gonna pre-compose this. Name it Hammer Alpha. Move all attributes, click continue, and solo it, jump into the layer. And what we're going to do is just solo the hammer part and not the handle because this is where we're going to add the cracks. So if you click G on the keyboard, it brings up the mask. Just do, oops, make sure you select your uh, layer. Just mask it with the handle part. Click M on the keyboard and change it from add to subtract. So now we just have the head of the hammer. 
and just to make sure that it's an alpha I just like to add a fill and then make a white so there we go that's the hair so if we go back you don't actually need that on so you can just turn that off another thing you can do which I forgot to tell you is you can add motion blur to it so when you have the camera shake or the hammer shake it has motion blur to make it look a little bit more realistic and blend in better so if you add motion blur to the hand the hammer clean which is just the hammer and then the strap at the back will just add a little bit more realism to it what you want to do is duplicate the hammer alpha and we're gonna pre-compose it name this one hammer little cracks animation doesn't have to be that long but <laughs> makes it easier to remember we double click on that you can see that we just have the alpha what we're gonna do is go to new solid cells cracks we're gonna drop a cell pattern change it from bubbles to crystals HQ bring the contrast way up something where you get more sharp lines we're also going to invert it at the white lines and then I'm going to bring the size up as well just to add in Perfect. You can also change the spurs to make it a little bit more random if you like. All right. Next thing, I'm going to drop down a turbulent, turbulent displacement. Change it from turbulent to smoother. Drop the size down quite a bit. This is just for those little imperfections that you'll see on the thing here. Change the complexity up a bit. Just so you don't get those sh very sharp lines and there's a bit of randomness to it. Alright, and those are pretty much your cracks. So if we go back to the comp, get rid of the alpha one. What you want to do is duplicate the hammer clean one, which is just the hammer. You can pre compose this again. So this is cracks and move attributes okay reason to move there is because it's not attached to the expression so if we link it it'll move back what we're going to add is a cc glass change the surface to little cracks animation now you can see that we have the cracks or we have a where the cracks would be and it goes along the hammer as well to fix that what we want to do is add a set mat change the first one to alpha hammer alpha the first one we made and then if we duplicate the mat also to the little cracks then change it from alpha channel to lumen all right now you can barely see it, but what we can do is change the softness to zero, displacement to zero, height to a negative number, so it indents it. Push lighting. I like to add actual lights to the scene. Makes it a little bit better. Up up the intensity. Well, I'm gonna move this light from the top because you can see that the highlights are up here. Also change it from the E lights so you can see what we're doing. So you can see that it fills in the cracks a little bit. So I'm gonna do maybe if you press AA on the keyboard it comes up with properties, then you can just press the intensity a little bit more. there now we have the little cracks what we're gonna do now is actually animate the cracks so what I like to do is I like to lock the comp double click on the animation layer grab it and then drag it over to the side and then change this one from layer strap to hammer all right so now you can see what we're doing in this comp 
in real time on the final product. What we're gonna add is a write on. And the way this tool works is if we increase this and then move that, you can see that it leaves a little spot. And to get rid of that, we could change it from size and then reveal a ruminant original image. Make sure that the alpha layer below is off as well or else it won't work as well. And what we can do now is we can keyframe this. Make sure you don't move the position, just move the origin of this. And we can do an animation. So if I keyframe the position, the size, okay, I'm gonna bring the size down to zero. Go a couple frames forward, bring the size up. And then move forward a bit you can see that the cracks start to move in so from this part on it's usually just kind of animating it yourself how you want the cracks to move I find that if you have more snappy frames so there's less space in between it the more real slick it is because cracks move really quick so if you move a couple frames drop another position frame move one forward and then just grab it and move it down. It adds that like a full snap to it. So there'll be a couple frames where there is none and then bam, it comes in. Alright, so you can see that I got a little animation of the uh, cracks moving. What I also like to do is I like to duplicate it, do this very same thing. So you want the keyboard to see your keyframes. Get rid of these two. Move the two frames forward. Click on right on, and then go in a different direction. The reason for this is because cracks move randomly. They're not going to all move up here and then all move down here. So if you have two of them, you can really randomize the way it looks to make it look more real all right and this is what your crack should kind of look like after you've animated both of them they just kind of go in their own direction different speeds and they're more snappy so they look like cracks you can also go up here if you want adjust it and change it however you like all right, next thing you want to do is you want to come over to where your comp is of the animation. You're going to duplicate it by control D. Right click, rename to big crack animation. Drop that below. It doesn't really matter where it is, but what you're going to do is turn this off, go inside. And this is the exact same comp as the uh, one you just animated. But what we're going to do with this one is if we go up here, we're going to change the contrast down so that it's a bit thicker. So 470. Also, add a fractal noise. Make sure that the fractal noise is above the right on. Bring up the contrast and bring down the brightness and change it to multiply. I'll bump up the con brightness again just to show you. Go back to your main layer where your hammer is. Go to the cracks layer where your CC glass is. Duplicate it. Change the glass to big crack animation. And then set mat from little cracks to big cracks. So now you got like a little bit of a wider thing going on. And if we go back to the big cracks, we're going to animate the brightness so that you can see when you turn down the brightness, it has less places where it's got that detail. So click U on the keyboard, see where the keyframes are. I like to add it fade in before the last cracks. So 
if we change the brightness so that you don't see it, so 100, negative 100, set a keyframe on brightness, and then move it along. And just kind of have it fade in a bit. So you can see that it just kind of grows in. Change the randomness because you can see that there's a lot of white and thing. You can change the contrast so there's not as many uh, spots. Or it could be. I'm gonna use that. So if we click fractal noise, click C. Click U so you know where the keyframe of the lost fractal noise. Go to the second layer and just drop it down. From here, you just gotta move it back up and then change it to multiply, and it's already done. Perfect. So now you should have two of the things fading in at different speeds. Oh, this one you have to change the size of it. Change. Change the second one so it's got a bit wider size. As you can see here, then the cracks slowly fade in, and then this wider part around the cracks kind of fade in after it and that's the effect we're trying to get so it looks like she's squeezing on it more and the pieces are actually starting to break right. next thing you want to do is we're going to start doing the displacement so go back up to project duplicate the cracks again by control D rename it to displace pattern drop that in rid of that. You can also renaming your layers helps a little bit so for this one here the top cracks one click enter click enter you can change it to uh, big cracks and the other one's the little one. All right, so go on the displacement pattern you can get rid of bottom two get rid of right on turbo displacement and we're going to change it to plates HQ this one if we go back to the main com you're going to duplicate the hammer clean so it's just a layer with the hammer in it bring it up and then we're going to add a displace and map for this displacement map we're going to choose the displacement pattern as you can see, there's displacement over here on the handle as well. There's a bit of displacement here, but first I'm going to change it to luminance. I'm changing to 10, 10, just so you can see it a little bit better. The way to fix this is if we go to the displacement pattern, come up here for the square mask tool, and we're just going to mask out one side of it. And we're just going to move this along add a bit of a feather so that it's just the hammer that's getting displaced alright back here change that to displace hammer and uh, I'm gonna keyframe this as well so when the cracks start to come in let me turn those off when the cracks start to come in you can Add uh, some displacement. Okay. Actually, drop this below the two cracks layer as well. Change the displacement to zero zero. Turn it back on. Add a keyframe to both of those, and then over a few frames or a bit of time, just kind of change the settings. I always find that the vertical is always better in a negative value, not too sure why but this kind of is the other thing we can do as well is if you see a lot of like this little displacement you can come back to the displacement pattern and uh, change, change the size of it so if you increase the size the pieces are going to be bigger and the way those works is the white ones are the ones that get displaced a lot and the darker don't get displaced and then everything else in between kind of gets displaced 
So you can change the pattern. Something you like. Where you can start to see a bunch of the pieces moving. If you don't like the way it looks, you can go to evolution and then change the seed of it. You got different pieces moving at different positions. Alright, I like that one. You see that it's moving on the bottom and then there's some pieces moving at the top. Perfect. Go back. View so you can see the keyframes. You want to highlight all the keyframes and click F9. This is kind of easy to ease them in, so. Alright, as you can see that when she squeezes it, the handle kind of displays is left to right. Another thing you can do is make this these keyframes snappy, so at one frame it's there, and then next frame it's pop. So I'm gonna actually do that. Alright, after a little bit of fooling around, moving the keyframes and changing the values, I ended up with the value of 10 and negative 10s. 10. It also changed it from central map to tile map, which just kind of made it look a little bit better. But now you get to see the cracks and then slowly moves into position. Alright, what you can do too is also trim this down so that you don't have it a whole layer. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of this composition because I don't need it. Unlock this layer. And we're going to work on the strap. So what we're going to add is a CC slant. Change the floor position to the origin of the middle of the hammer there. What this does is this kind of stretches it and moves it along. So what I like to do is change that back to zero. Go to Alt. Click on the slant and type in wiggle 40 50. Close bracket. So now you get to see it's kind of moving along. But it'll be moving along before the hammer action moves, so we're going to add another slider to it. Highlight the 50, grab the pit wick. Bring it to the slider and then exit over that. So frame one, we'll have zero. At frame 40, we're gonna have say 50. Alright, as you can see here, that it's just kind of moving, moving along there. To give this a little bit more power, what I like to do is add a bit more slant to it. Change that to like 47 and then add a direction blur into the way the mover the hammer is moving and just kind of increase it a bit oh now it looks like it's got some motion blur there you're pretty much just gonna have to play with the settings here I had to change the slant a few times on that sweet spot where it kind of is it's not something that you really are looking at on the scene anyways so it's kind of there to add that a little bit more of speed moving into our hand. Alright, now we're going to add the glow. So to add the glow, what you want to do is you want to duplicate the animation of the cracks. Bring that to the top, turn this layer on, and this is the one where you'll see the cracks, but if we change it to add, cracks won't be there. What we're going to do is toggle the switches, press the wiggle, and motion blur if you really want to. Set mat, set mat to the hammer alpha. Add a simple choker, bring it all the way up to 100. This re this so it kind of just animates from the middle out, so you can have this whenever you like. Here, I'm just gonna have it kind of in the middle of the animation. Q 
keyframe it at 100 and then somewhere near the end change it to zero so now you can see that we'll slowly grow out you can see that the lines are growing out all right i'm gonna add a quick fast blur just to blur it so it's not hard in the middle and a vc color vibrance and change this to a blue I like to bring the vibrance down a bit, brightness down, and then bring the gamma up. This is so you get that very like white look into the middle of it. Next thing we're gonna add a glow. We're gonna bring the threshold down just a bit, quite a bit actually. Bring the radius up. Change the fast blur to a little bit more, the eight, and uh, duplicate that glow. Another one. This one we're gonna bring up the threshold just a bit, and then bring up the radius quite a bit. Just adds that more outer glow look to it. What you want to do is gonna add uh, opacity keyframes so that when it fades in, if you click E on the keyboard, you can see when your simple choker is coming in. So if we go to shift T, go opacity, change to zero, add a keyframe, then have the opacity brighten all the way up. Alright, and that's kind of how it looks when it glows in like that. You can see that it slowly fades in, gets brighter, and adds a bit more glow to it. Go to project, we're going to duplicate the uh, animation once more. Control D, right click, rename, we're gonna name this race. Bring that to the top. This one should be named. Oops. This one is the glow. The raise. Have to do the same thing here. Change it to add. Drop side the comp and for these we're gonna add a set mat change it to hammer alpha and then we're also gonna add a fast radio blur minimize right on change this up to not too high so that you can't see it on that like 70 to 80 it's kind of the sweet spot and what you could do if you like is if you click center keyframe you can move it over to the side here you can just kind of animate where you want it to gleam so as you can see the rays kind of like animate when you change the keyframes like that I'm gonna actually move this I like for the race to shoot at the camera, it just looks a little bit better, in my opinion. We're gonna copy the set mat, the fast blur, control C, go to the bottom layer, and do the same thing. Go back to the main comp, click on the rays, add a quick tint, change it to a blue. Change the amount of tint to 20, so it's still a bit white. We're gonna add a glow to it, bring down the threshold quite a bit, and then bring up the radius, kind of glow it out like that. And if you go to the keyframes of your glow, I like to do the rays a little bit after. So, click T, zero percent. As you can see here that the rays are there, they're just kind of shaking. 
that's because I forgot to add it to the wiggle expression and add the motion blur. So now you can see that they're following the movement as well. All right, next thing we're gonna do is add a flare. If you don't have optical flares, this is the best way you can do it. So flare, drop down, fractal noise. I'm gonna hide that layer, click G. I'm just gonna do a kind of rough shape of where the cracks are here. Just so it looks like flare's actually coming out where the cracks were. Back on. We're gonna, we're gonna add a CC radial blur, fast blur. To the position so that it's coming out towards us and then just increases quite a bit. Just like that. Feather the mask if you like. Just get rid of those hard edges a little bit more. Click on the flares, add a turbulent displacement. And change the amount to like 120. And bring the thing down. So if we solo this, it works like that. But if we go to evolution, click Alt on the keyframe, click in times, and then the little time button, also the E where your E key is, and then type in a thousand. Next so though, what this does, we'll just add a little animation to it. It's actually a bit too fast. Gotta change it to 800. And then toggle the switches, give it to add, but follow the wiggle. Gotta copy the tints and the glow from the rays. Down, drop it. Minimize that. Open up a glow. Add solo so we can see it a little bit better. Bring up the threshold so you get a bit more of the blue back. We're just going to change up the radius. Just going to change the intensity up a little bit. But for this, what I'm going to do is near the end. I'm just going to keyframe it in, so if you click T, go to the zero, go to the, near the end, go to 100%. For this one, I don't add the motion blur because it's a bit overkill for this. And we're going to go up to camera orientation, move the origin to the middle, click S on the keyboard. Go to zero, and then near the end again, have it at like 150, maybe a bit higher. Yeah, you're gonna have to scale this up until it pretty much covers the whole hammer. Also move it a bit. All right, you can see that it comes in a bit too quick and it's more on the top. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the flare just a bit further down. And for the click U on the keyboard so you can see all the keyframes. I'm just going to have those come in a bit quicker. Those get out a bit later. All right. So that's kind of what we got is a little animation of it going out. Now you got to decide when you want the lightning. Before, so by frame 16, you won't see much of the lightning. So before that, I'm going to do from two seconds, 16. There we go. Okay. New, solid, lightning. Drop down advanced lightning. Pre-compose this. Lightning strikes. Then attach it to the wiggle. Blow that. 
Actually, I'm going to move the hand above the glow and the rays. And then lightning will be above it and the flare will be above it. Right. And add motion blur to the lightning as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the glow settings, change the glow opacity to zero, change from direction to strike. So now we can animate where we want the two points. Change the turbulence, bring it up a bit, the forking down to lower amount, and then the decay up. So it's not too complex of a lightning bolt, but go back to the main comp, lock the layer again, double click on the lightning, bring it over here. So now we can kind of see where we want the lightning. Alright, so I said from frame two seconds to 216 is what I'm going to be doing. So from here, I'm going to go to expert settings. I'm going to go to the core drain 100% plus the or radius to zero. So two frames forward, keyframe that, keyframe the drain, go to two, change this to about six, and the core drain to zero. So now we just have like the lightning kind of build up into it. All right, now we're going to change the position, whoops, the origin and the direction. So frame two, the advanced lightning. I'm gonna kind of want it there, just like that. You on the keyboard, you'll see all your keyframes. If you want, you can change the first one so it looks like it's kind of moving. But then you pretty much go on every two frames and moving the animation kind of in the direction you want. I find I try to move lightning further down the hammer as I. Uh, keep this in kind of the same direction or same spot so it's going to be on the top part of the hammer so then two frames forward move this up and then just kind of move this down alright right, after that what I like to do is I like to duplicate it now we got two lightnings. What you can do is change the conductive state, so this will randomize it. And click R on the keyboard, and you can kind of rotate in the direction you want. This is pretty much to save you a bit of time. Your keyframe, you'll still have to adjust it. Alright, as you can see I got a little bit of a lightning thing going on here. And, uh, that's how it should look. I do three going towards the hilt of the hammer and then I just have one going down the hand. The thing I forgot to do as well is change the color of it. So if you go to the color of one, just kind of find the color. Just like that. Maybe copy little number on the bottom you can go to bar control V okay all right, all right so now we got this blue line in going on all right go back to the main comp and let's start at where your lightning comes in add a solid composite change it to black uh, vector blur, CC vector blur, and just to about three, kind of adds a bit of like if you go higher than three, like for example eight, you can see what it does. But here for three, add a turbulent displacement, the size down to two, now up to 
30, 50, it doesn't matter. We're gonna add a quick glow. Change threshold to zero. Change it up to 25. Not too high. Change the threshold down to 0.5. All right. This one, I'm just gonna kind of increase the threshold a bit. Bring some of that color back. And one more. This one's going way out. And give us. That, that, and hue and saturation. Let's bring the saturation a bit down. And then if you add exposure, you can increase that. Andrew Kramer released the lightning tutorial series. Highly recommend it. And minimize that. Go to lightning. Change the transfer mode to add. And now you have the lightning. You can see the final product here where it has the cracking, the lightning, and then the flare comes in. Uh, you can fool around with glowing settings of the lightning. They look a little bit odd right now. But you can see the cracks, the extra crackiness, displacement starts to move in, and then the lightning. And then the glow. Overall, it's a very long tutorial, but the effect is pretty convincing. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope to see some videos with this effect. Please consider subscribing if you're new. I release new superhero related tutorials every week. And yeah, thanks for watching.